In this feature, we're going to talk about the 15 most interesting things we've learned about Battlefield 5 during E3. Without further ado, let's jump right in. It looks beautiful. Let's get the most obvious and more readily apparent thing out of the way right off the bat. Battlefield has had a long history of looking absolutely stunning with each installment, and Battlefield 5 is no different. Every tiny bit of footage we saw of the game looked stunning, with best-in-class visuals across the board, from the lighting, to the character models, to the tiny little details in the environments, to the snow. Oh my god, the snow! Granted, on the consoles, the game probably won't look as good as the E3 footage did, though the Xbox One X version is bound to be pretty close. But even so, what we saw was enough to get us incredibly excited about the game's visual fidelity. Grand Operations One of the new modes being added to Battlefield 5 is Grand Operations, and we have quite a lot of new info on it to talk about. Grand Operations is a 64-player mode that sees players engaging in large-scale conflicts spread across four in-game days, with each day featuring different multiplayer modes with custom rules and distinct maps. The results at the end of each day will determine how well each team is faring on the subsequent day, and if the conflict should make it to the fourth and final day, both teams will enter a sudden death battle called Final Stand where each player will have one life and one clip of ammunition for their primary weapon and nothing else, with the last team standing ultimately winning the match. Combined Arms Another new mode that's being added in Battlefield 5 is Combined Arms, a four-player co-op mode which sort of serves as a bridge between the single player and the multiplayer. The purpose of this mode is to help those who may not be all too familiar with Battlefield's multiplayer get acclimatized with the experience in a more accessible manner. Each mission in the mode randomly generates new objectives, and players are tasked with either finishing as many of these as possible, or extracting out of the zone they're put into, all the while managing the limited set of resources given to them. War Stories one of the ways Battlefield 1 surprised people most was with its single-player offerings. Battlefield has rarely ever been known for having a decent campaign, but Battlefield 1's episodic collection of individual stories felt thrilling and engaging. War Stories is, of course, returning in Battlefield 5, and we got our first look at one of the stories that will be included in the game. This is the story of a young child in Nazi-occupied Norway, whose main goal is to reunite with their family while fighting alongside Norwegian resistances. It looks interesting from what little we saw, and DICE have promised that the nature of Battlefield 5's war stories will be much more personal than what we saw in the previous game, so that's definitely something to be excited about. Royale We're not done talking about new modes being added in Battlefield 5 yet because, of course, the biggest new addition is neither Grand Operations nor Combined Arms, nor anything else. No, Battlefield 5's biggest and most prominent new addition is going to be a Battle Royale mode. DICE have promised it will feature the same brand of tactical combat, vehicular action, and environment destruction that characterizes other modes in the series, but not much else is known at this point. Regardless, Given the series' penchant for large-scale online battles, big player counts, and huge maps, we're quite excited about the possibilities. New Map Map design has always been one of Battlefield's biggest strengths. That is, something even the series' most avid critics would agree with most of the time. And we got a look at one of the maps in the game. This is Norvik, a snow-covered map that looks absolutely stunning and based on footage, seems to be designed really well. It seems to be striking the perfect balance between large open expanses for vehicular action and tight claustrophobic corridors for infantry combat. No more spotting. One of the mechanics that's going to be changed quite a bit in Battlefield 5 is that of spotting and locating enemies. While in Battlefield 1, players had to do a little more than resorting to spamming a single button to make a reticule appear above an enemy, making them ridiculously easy to spot even in the busiest of battles, things are going to be a lot more organic in Battlefield 5. Instead, 
You can now only point out environmental obstacles and objects around and in the vicinity of enemies. Reviving Overhauled Spotting isn't the only thing that's being changed up, though. Reviving is also being overhauled, and quite significantly at that. Reviving in Battlefield 5 is going to be a much more realistic mechanic, with you actually having to physically interact with downed soldiers by going down to treat them and then pulling them off the ground as well. While this is bound to inject tension into the experience by making the process a little longer, this may have the potential of becoming a bit annoying after the first few times. So, let's hope that doesn't end up happening. Buddy Revive That's not it as far as changes to reviving mechanics are concerned though. Thanks to the new Buddy Revive mechanic, reviving isn't limited to just medics anymore. All players in a squad can revive all players. However, if you're not a medic, reviving down friendlies will take longer than if you're a qualified medic. Which, well, it makes sense, that's for sure. And more versatility in different soldier classes is always appreciated. Regardless of whether or not you're a medic, though, players will never be able to recover full health, making things even grittier and tenser. Customization Customization has of course been part of Battlefield experiences for some time now, and it's going to be no different in Battlefield 5. Though we do not know the extent to which customization will be applicable to stuff in the game, we do know that it will include customizable weapons, soldiers and vehicles, while on the cosmetics side, customization is going to extend to things like apparel and skins as well. This of course leads us to our next point. Meta game. All the customization and progression in Battlefield 5 is going to be a small part of Tides of War, which is the meta game that encompasses essentially all of Battlefield 5. In Tides of War, each player will be part of a company, which will level up and upgrade right alongside their soldier. So we're assuming these two aspects are going to be tied together to at least some extent. That's about as much as we know about the meta game so far, but we're hoping for more precise information soon. No Season Pass DICE and EA also made it a point to make it clear to anyone who is listening that Battlefield 5 wouldn't come with a Season Pass, which is good news for sure. This of course means that any and all maps that are released as DLC after Battlefield 5's launch are going to be free for everyone to download and play on, so that the player base of the game isn't segregated on the basis of what map packs one may or may not have. No loot boxes. But hey, even Battlefront 2 did that. It also didn't have a season pass and offered all post-launch content for free, and then turned around and included some of the worst monetization options we've ever seen in a fully priced game. Thankfully, DICE made it perfectly clear that that's not going to be the case with Battlefield 5. There will be no loot boxes or other similar RNG pay to win stuff in Battlefield 5 whatsoever. Microtransactions That does not however mean that the game is going to have no microtransactions at all. Because, let's face it, as much as we might hate it, most multiplayer-centric games these days have microtransactions involved at least to some degree. Hell, even some single-player ones, looking at you, Shadow of War. There will be a premium in-game currency that will allow players to buy cosmetic items only, and while this currency can be earned by playing the game itself, players will also have the option of purchasing it. Early Trial Battlefield 5 launches on October 19th for the Xbox One, PS4 and PC, but players will also be able to try out the game a little bit before its launch. The game's early trial will kick off for EA Access members on Xbox One and Origin subscribers on PC, so no PS4 early trial, and will give players the chance to try four modes, Conquest, Rush, Domination and Operations. Three War Story episodes, including the prologue, and a total of five maps. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.